everybody in seated this morning. If you'll uh, stand with me briefly, I'll do a quick invocation and the pledge, and then we'll get started. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for the time and the opportunity to gather and meet and fellowship, uh, learn more about the great things that are going on in our community. Uh, we thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed on us. We pray that you help guide us in directions that help us bestow blessings on others. Uh, be with those that are not here with us this morning. Be with those that are traveling over their summer vacations. Uh, just watch and protect over, watch over and protect everyone uh, in the club. We thank you for those that uh, serve on a daily basis uh, to keep us safe and keep us healthy. Uh, we thank you for those in our in positions of power and government. Thank you for their leadership. I ask that you guide and direct everything that they do as well. We just thank you for this club. Thank you for Lake Highlands. Uh, thank you for what a great community it is and, and help us to always be on the lookout for ways that we can help make it a better place um, as you continue to work on our improvement as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. It's good to see everyone this morning. Um, got on my list here in big red letters to recognize any guests, and I think Truett's got um, a guest slash new member maybe to, to introduce this morning. Certainly. Yeah, good morning. This is Matthew Middleton. Matt, he and his wife Lauren and their two children, Molly and John. I think Molly's three and John's almost two. 22 in October. 22 in October. And they live on all the over here. We met through a dinners for nine through our church originally and uh, have gotten to know them over the last year or two and uh, have a lot of mutual friends and everything. And Matt mentioned to me a few weeks ago about wanting to join the Exchange Club and get to know some folks around here and stuff. And uh, so welcome him this morning. I think he's going to be a new member. So please take on. Welcome, Matt. I saw you talking to Brent already this morning, so I'm sure y'all are well on your way to getting the membership application taken care of. I think you'll find the exchange will fit exactly what you're looking for if you're looking to get to know folks in the community. It's been a great spot for me for quite some time. Thanks for joining us this morning. All right, announcements. So, our, our audio visual I don't have a lens. already <laughs> having to take me. By the way, Rick's not here, which is why everything is Hi, Rick. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. A few announcements. Matt Lundy with an announcement on 4th of July. Come on. No, I don't know. Come on. All right. 4th of July is happening on the 3rd of July. Um, we will be having the parade. Starts at nine at the church, on church, and then the carnival will start at about ten o'clock. Um, we will have more details for you guys on the, I guess the second, well, yeah, the July second meeting. But we will need about fifteen to twenty volunteers. But we have about forty participants in the parade, maybe about three hundred some folks in the parade, and then about twenty to twenty-five vendors at this time. So. There's going to be a lot of people there, so we'll need some help. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Um, yes, there will be a sign-up genius that goes out in the newsletter next week. Um, make sure you sign up and not just show up, although showing up is quite critical. Um, but it will help if we know who's coming. Um, listen, we, we missed this last year. The community has really um, been clamoring for it. We've had a lot of emails and texts and messages on the Facebook about, you know, is 4th of July parade coming back? Yes, we're back, uh, but we need people to turn up and, and uh, help us put it on. So watch out for the sign of genius, plan on being there. The meeting on the 2nd of July uh, will be a parade prep meeting. Uh, so plan on being here for that. Uh, let's see, other, Brian Haynes with the YMCA has an announcement as well. Come on up. Well, good morning. I uh, wanted to share with the club that uh, you all were a 
generous donor to support uh, our midnight basketball program at the YMCA. It's a program that had been going on two years before COVID. Uh, we did not hold the program last year. Uh, the design of the program is to give uh, sixth to eighth graders kind of a safe haven to come one night a week, uh, be around some uh, adult role models. We bring in a speaker, coaches from high schools, uh, pastors, uh, other leaders in the community. Uh, feed them a little bit and then send them home. Uh, we call it midnight basketball, but it's from 7.30 to 9.30 <laughs> on Tuesdays. Um, in July, I would love for some of the club to come up and visit, maybe interact with the kids and see your dollars at work. An amazing program, you know, um, if we can keep these teens in places like the Y versus hanging out in the neighborhoods on the street, getting into trouble, uh, we're, we're doing some good work. And since I have the platform, two quick things. Our construction project is back on. The pool, indoor pool, is almost, um, well, not almost complete. Dirt's moved out and we'll start putting down uh, form and plaster in the upcoming weeks. I think open in September. And for those of you that know families in need of food, um, we're going to relaunch our food distribution program that we did last year in partnership with Brighter Bites. So on uh, Wednesdays, it looks like from 11 to 1, families in need can come up and get a huge box of fruits and vegetables. Um, if you want to pick up a box and take it to a family in need, you can do so. And I'll post the exact times and dates on the uh, Facebook page for the club. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brian. And thanks for all the great work that y'all are doing at the Y. Uh, the club has been a long time sponsor of different programs at the Y, Safety Around Water for several years, and more recently, the Midnight Basketball. Um, those are obviously very worthwhile programs and would certainly encourage your support to the extent you can get out and um, see what we're doing up there. Um, all right, a couple of dates to note. Oktoberfest is coming up on October 2nd. And while that may seem like it's a long way away, it's not. Um, and we've kind of got a little late start out of the gates. Carla, do you want to talk? Do you want me to roll through this? We need sponsors. There we go. We need sponsors. <laughs> Carlin or Jason Edgerton are your guys to talk to. Anything yeah, I else? Think, I think the biggest thing is, is twofold. I know, piggybacking off of what we asked about the support of July. Uh, also, everybody, please, if you can, if you're not already booked to be out of town or something like that, mark your calendar. We're, we're going to need volunteers. We're anticipating it to be a big, big year uh, with people wanting to come back out to events. So, uh, if at all possible, you know, line up the great coach and babysitter kiddos and, uh, and, and make it a fun day, bring your wife out to, to help or significant other, uh, and, and just please work it off on your calendars. And yes, any leads, any ideas on sponsorships, uh, any and all are welcome. Um, Jason Anderson is heading it up, but myself or Patrick or Todd Bowen, any of the three of us can help connect on those things as well. Very good, yes. Get those guys some ideas on sponsorships. Um, obviously that's Kind of what made things go for the auction and, and getting um, Oktoberfest funded before we open the gates um, is a huge goal and would help us a great deal in that endeavor. Um, the Lake Highlands Wildcat Club Cat Classic is coming up on June 29th. They made an announcement here a few months ago. I've seen some flyers circulating, so I thought I would bring it back up again today. Uh, that's a great organization doing some great things for our high school sports sports clubs, sports organizations. Um, you can get information or register at lhwildcatclub.org. All right, with that, not only is Rick absent today, but so is Michael Bailey, VP of Programs, but he was kind enough to hook us up with a great speaker and program this morning, and I will be doing the introduction. <coughs> with us today is Cindy Schaefer of Network of Community Ministries. If you're not familiar with the Network of Community Ministries, as I frankly wasn't, embarrassingly, you will really enjoy hearing about how involved they are in supporting RISD and families in need within the RISD footprint. Um, originally from the greater Pittsburgh area, Cindy has uh, been working for more than 25 years with local and national nonprofits, primarily with a focus on serving the poor and vulnerable. She serves on the advisory board for the Richardson Chamber of Commerce and as a member of the Richardson Rotary and helping agencies serving Richardson. <clears throat> She's a proud graduate of the Leadership Richardson Class 33, if I can read my Roman numerals, and is a member of the LRAA. And Cindy and her husband Dave live in Keller and enjoy spending time with their granddaughter Lily. And with that, I will turn it over to Cindy to tell us about Network of Community Ministries. I am reading my phone because, y'all, you need a 
like a clock in the back so people know when to stop. Because I, I honestly, I can talk for a really long time, and I know you don't want that. You have places to go. So um, I, I do want to thank you for having me here today. And listening to my bio, I know it sounds very Richardson-centric with what I'm involved in. And I think whenever people say that they haven't, you know, they aren't familiar with the network of community ministries or even what they do know, they think we just serve Richardson. And that's really not true. So our service area, actually, um, we serve the 14 zip codes that make up the Richardson ISD. And even if that zip code spills over into another area, we serve the whole zip code. So actually, more than 70% of our service area is in Dallas. So we, we serve more of the city of Dallas than anywhere else. But the interesting thing is we're just a really teeny tiny um, part of the service providers for the city of Dallas. But in the city of Richardson, we're it for social services. So they invest very heavily in what we do. Um, they know that we serve other people, but I'm okay with them saying that we're their, um, their social service, we're their nonprofit of choice. Um, we are in the middle of a capital campaign and they contributed a million dollars to help us with our building, um, which I think is magnificent. But we serve much more than just the city of Richardson. So, um, I, I, including Lake Highlands. Lake Highlands is a big part of what we do. Um, so, who are we? And you see there, that's the, the area that we serve. Those are the zip codes that we serve. Um, and we primarily, I guess so we're a social service agency. We primarily do emergency services, we do stabilization programs and youth programming. So, I believe the common denominator that people have, all of us, we all need to eat, right? If you're hungry, you really can't focus on much else of anything. And that's true of everyone, regardless of income. So we primarily look at 185% of the federal poverty guidelines to serve people um, in our, our areas. And when you look at that, really for one person, it's just over like $21,000 a year. That's not a lot of money to, to be in the, the poverty guidelines, but we wanna start with food. So people come in with emergency services, we give them food, we have a clothing closet, we can help with some financial assistance for housing, so rent utilities, things like that. And then once we get those emergency needs where they're not hungry anymore, they're not worried about how they're gonna feed their kids, we try to stabilize them. And what that means, we have GED, ESL classes, career services, um, job search, things like that to try to get them back up on track. So I've been at Network for about five years now, and before I came and even after, people would say, well, Network, you're the ones like, you just try to get people over the bump in the road. And I've changed that a little bit to say, we wanna get people over the bump in the road, but my real goal is to make sure that they're just not circling the parking lot, keeping going over that same speed bump over and over. And that's where those stabilization programs come and our youth programs go hand in hand with all of that too because families are, are huge in what we do. And we do back to school programming, so we partner with RASD, we do a backpack program um, with school supplies, things like that. We do a Toyland Express program at the holidays where we make sure that the family has have toys for their kids. We do um, what we call Tooth Fairy, but it's an oral hygiene program where we you know, teach them how to, to their teeth and, and all of those things because many of our kids they don't go to the dentist so you know you take your kids to the dentist and they get their little bag of goodies with instructions a lot of the lower income kids never get that so we give that to them um, to be able to do that and right now in the middle of summer we are, do our um, big meals for little kids program which is <coughs> supplemental feeding for the summer whenever kids aren't in school and we've been doing a lot of that actually through COVID when the shutdowns happen and Brian, you were talking about doing, we, we have people coming to network to distribute meals, but we also do a mobile food pantry too, and um, where we go out and, and do some different things. <clears throat> so our need has been giant. Um, and this shows, right, we're just finishing our fiscal year. We have a July 1 through June 30 fiscal year, and I don't have those final numbers. So you're seeing two years prior, so FY 18, 19, and FY 1920. And you'll see, um, in 18-19, we served just over 6,000 unique people. So, and that means we only count you once, no matter how many times you come through our door for services. The year prior, we went from 6,000 to over 20,000. 
Um, and for food, and it was normal for all the history, we served about 700,000 pounds of food a year. Um, and in 1920, we served about a million and a half pounds of food. So we more than doubled. And those numbers really can be attributed to COVID because the first part of COVID was last fiscal year. Um, it, and it's, it is crazy how many people have needed help. Um, you know, many people have heard myself or, or others that are in social services talk about, you know, they get up and you, and I've, I know you've heard people say this in charity events, we're all just one, one or two paychecks away, one health incident, one crisis from being in poverty. Well, COVID was that thing that, that made a lot of people in poverty. Um, part of our service area is, is the Canyon Creek area of Richardson, which is a higher end neighborhood, if you're familiar. It, it's part of our service area, and we've always gotten into a lot of trouble because people would say, well, you don't serve our area. No, we serve your area. We just have never had clients come there. Well, when COVID first started, we had longtime volunteers who were checking in people for food. And I happened to be right there, and someone presented their idea, and it was a Canyon Creek zip code. And the volunteer who had been at Network for over 30 years said, we don't serve your, your service area, I'm so sorry. And, and, and looking, oh no, we do, it's Canyon Creek. They didn't know because they never, that wasn't familiar to them because it wasn't in their mantra. And that's happened a lot. So that, that really attributes to the number of, of increase. Housing is another area. The year prior to COVID, we served 987 folks um, with rental assistance, $85,000 we gave out in assistance. Last year, 2,048, and we gave up about $350,000 in rental assistance. Now, again, we're, we're just finishing up the next fiscal year, and you're gonna see those numbers have increased quite a bit through that. We've given away about $900,000 of rental assistance. And those numbers, the need is actually a lot greater. You know, there, there's a lot of talk about the moratorium on evictions, and you know, mortgage companies have had moratoriums on that. And I think I've surprised a lot of people by saying I'm so opposed to those moratoriums on eviction. Um, not because I wanna see people homeless, but because eventually someone has to pay the bill. And there are so many people that owe $10,000, $15,000 of back rent or back mortgage payments, and now what do they do? They're, I mean, sooner or later, someone needs to pay. And it's also just shifting the debt if we, you can't forgive that altogether because somebody owns that building and someone is going to have to pay for it. So now you have landlords that are going bankrupt, the mortgage companies are, are trying to, to figure out the costs associated with people not paying mortgages. At one point I saw a statistic that 65% of all mortgages were at least one month late during COVID, those few months after. Um, those are scary, scary numbers, and those are just going to continue to go up, unfortunately, as these moratoriums are lifted. Um, this is our stabilization programs. So these numbers are fairly similar, but that's also a scary thing, too, because thinking about, we went from 979 in 1819 to 1368 in 1920, but the last part of that 1920 was when COVID shut down everything, and we weren't doing any programs. So there's a whole quarter where the numbers were super minimal till we got back online and doing things virtually. But that, those are a large number of people that we were offering services to, um, job placement and things. And it's an area that we are continuing to grow and I'm really excited about how that will go. So, and then as I'm talking about moving into this new year, you know, this is what we're projecting to serve in food. So we did a million and a half pounds of food that last year. We're projecting to finish this year at 2.6 million pounds of, pounds of food. So we go from 700,000 pounds of food before COVID to now we're 2 million pounds greater than that in food distribution. Um, the need is just that big. And I, I, I know we've talk, we think of poverty. Um, Lake Highlands is an area that I think you have income extremes. You have a lot of very wealthy people, but there's an awful lot of very poor people. And Lake Highlands is an area that we've had great increase in the number of people that we've seen. Um, many people ask me about, okay, so how, how has that looked for you with COVID? Like are numbers going down? How is that going? And this is a graph that just shows that April of last year was when we first started the lockdown through April of this year. And we were, we're holding really about 2,000 families a month. Um, 
But for some perspective on that, prior to the pandemic, we were serving about 700, 750 families a week. We were serving, or 750 families a month, we were serving 750 families a week um, after the, the lockdowns. It's huge. Um, also keep in mind that network is very small. We try to keep very lean in our staff. Um, so we were doing all of that. We had nine full-time staff after the pandemic. We have 15 now we had to hire. Most of our services with volunteers. We most literally could not do what we do without volunteers. And that was really hard through the pandemic because to volunteer during office hours, you retire. Um, and, and those retired folks were the ones that were, were staying home and not coming out. So things have looked very different for us. Um, but y'all live in Lake Highlands. I want to talk a little bit about what, what we're doing very specifically in your community. So we have been doing food distribution in Lake Highlands for, for quite some time. But our partnership with RISD has just increased exponentially. Um, I, I know Justin Bono is a member of your club, but I'm sorry he's not here today. He and I participated in a, a murder mystery fundraiser together. We were a secret love interest in this so thing. <laughs> hoping to see you, my love interest. It's still um, a secret. It's still a secret. It's on video now. I don't know. His wife was there. Maybe. It was a whole thing. Um, but, it, but, we, but part of our partnership was with Justin and, and different folks, Karen Clardy. Um, we work with Karen quite a bit, who's um, the school board president for Richardson. Um, but, but we've really increased partnership, and we do mobile food pantry. Um, we, we go to Thurgood Marshall on a regular basis, and you'll see here, we started in October of 2019 through April of 2021. We've served um, almost 36,000 pounds of food to 667 families. Um, the Wildcat Den is a, a thing that I'm really excited about. So we um, we have been giving food so that, to supplement the, their feeding program in the Wildcat Den. And something we don't have here that it was a very short period of time, but we were meeting with the PTA who sponsors the, the Wildcat Den and things, and they do Fresh Fruit Fridays. And, um, I, and this is one of the things that I can't believe that people were doing this. They were paying money out of their pockets to go to grocery stores buying fruit so that all of the kids in the high school would have fresh fruit every Friday. I'm like, why are you doing that? I can give you fruit for free. I can give you food. We have money for this. So before, like, if before COVID shut everything down, they were coming and, and we were ordering fruit for them and, and trying to supplement that as much as possible because I love that when we can partner with people, they're willing to do the manpower behind it and we have the resources to provide so they don't have to dig into their own pockets to do that. And that to me is what the great thing is that they're, they're on the ground, they know the people, they can serve people well, but we can help supplement that. Um, and I think that's hugely important. Um, this year too, we received grant funding from Blue Cross Blue Shield to do a partnership with Healing Hand Ministries. Um, they do their, um, their health centers at Greenville and the Vickery Health Center. And we are taking our mobile food pantry to those stops monthly, and we're distributing food while they're receiving their, their assistance through those health centers. So that's a, a program that we intend to increase too. But just in a really short period of time, we just started in March, we've already served um, 163 families. So, and we weren't sure, I mean, you never know how that's gonna catch on. But again, we know going into the community, partnering with people that they already know, that they're trusted, and especially schools, um, schools, health centers, that's, you know, people are comfortable with that. We want them to trust that we're there to help them and we can, we can partner with that. So those are super exciting things. And you know, this is a picture of our mobile pantry on the left. We've had this truck now for two years that um, we started going out once a week. Um, we got the truck in, in the fall of 2019 and we went to a school every week. And Lake Highlands was one of the areas that we would visit. But then the pandemic hit, the need got greater, people couldn't get out. So we increased that. We have four stops a week now. And then you see the picture there with, we can't wait for our second truck. Um, we have received quite a bit of grant funding, including from Crystal Charity Ball um, this next year, where we are purchasing a second mobile pantry. And on the bottom, you can, those two pictures on the, on the right, you can see this is, it's not our actual truck, but it's what it will look like. It won't be a box truck, it's a step van, which is like a FedEx UPS truck size. And it will be fully equipped inside, like a food pantry, like you see, it'll be a little grocery store. 
Um, families can walk up in there and shop. It will have refrigeration, freezers, that kind of thing. So it will look like a, a fully stocked little pantry. And this area is one that we will be visiting a lot. That's what we will take with our Healing Hands Ministries. We'll take it to schools. And also part of our partnership with Crystal Charity Ball is that we are partnering with daycare centers. So we're going to the lower income centers where they have higher percentage of um, financial assistance. And we'll be doing a mobile food pantry there too to be able to get things to them. Ultimately, to me, it's not just about food. Food, again, that's our baseline. We all need to eat. That's establishing relationship with those neighborhoods, trust with them. And I want to be able to do other services. I want to be able to do classes with them, ESL, GED, career services. We went, we have a, a clothing closet, which during COVID is all online now. So we have the, the, they can shop online and do curbside pickup. We want to be able to take their clothing pickup um, through the trucks and, and just be able to, to meet all of that. So past the trucks, what's next? Um, we have purchased a new building. I mentioned earlier, the city of Richardson has funded us in a, a significant way. Um, in all the middle of this pandemic and everything else, we were doing a capital campaign, which was kind of crazy to do. Um, our goal was five and a half million dollars. And I have to say, as of yesterday, we have surpassed that goal, um, which I find absolutely a relief and exciting, um, but ridiculous that we were able to do that in, in this economic time, as well as continue to provide all of those extra needs. So the building is under renovation right now. They expect to um, turn it over to me at the end of July. Um, I have learned things about construction that I never hope to ever have to use again or know again. Um, but thankfully it, it will be done soon. But you see some pictures. We'll have a, a new um, food pantry that looks like that, a clothing closet on the bottom. Our food pantry is, is pretty large. It will be the size of about an Aldi or Trader Joe grocery store and set up like a grocery store with shopping carts and they will shop. Our clothing closet, same thing. It will look like a retail store. We use a, a gift card system with our clients. Everything is a point of sale. They get money loaded on a network gift card. Um, based on the number of people in their family, and then they shop with that and check out. It helps them with budgeting. Um, it, it helps us with inventory and all of those things. But our long-term intention is to make the clothing store an actual retail store, a resale shop that the public can go in. And um, our, our program folks love the idea that, okay, they have the gift cards, but nobody's going to know if it's a client checking out with a network gift card or if you're checking out with your, your MasterCard. Same thing, and it just gives all of that a little bit um, more dignity in the experience. Um, our, our new building, exciting kinds of things. We'll have classroom space for up to 100, private case management space, our reception areas double, our food pantry and warehouse will be, it's giant, which is good. Um, North Texas Food Bank toured and they were excited. They said this was probably going to be their largest partner. Um, we went with North Texas Food Bank from being a very small community partner to now we're in their top five distributors, which I think is also, um, it's, it's not somewhere where I ever wanted to be. I just want to say that out loud because I, I don't like that we have this much need in our community. Um, I'm, I'm hoping through our stabilization programs that, that we won't have to be. I don't want to have to be that. Um, and, and I haven't mentioned this, but I think a lot of you, we have capacity for disaster relief and recovery. I think many of you know, you might remember the tornadoes that touched down in October of 2019. Um, network played a large part in the recovery phase for those people in our area that were hit by that. Um, when I started at Network five years ago, in all transparency, we were in financial trouble and I really thought I was gonna have to close the doors. Um, I went to the city of Richardson and told them that I, I, I needed $50,000 to get through the summer. And um, I said, can you help me? Do you know someone who can help me? And they came up with this brilliant idea of having an MOU with us that should there be a natural disaster, network would take, take part in that in the recovery phase because we have a lot of volunteers and we would help. And I foolishly signed this MOU for this, this money thinking, when do you ever have natural disasters? You know that, okay, yeah, we can do that. We can train, we can be FEMA trained and drill. And little did I know that a year later, you know, a few years later, there would be not one tornado, not two tornadoes that touched down, but 10 tornadoes in, in one day. And a lot of people don't remember that, but I do. 
Um, but it, it was um, it was a very humbling experience for us to be able to do that. Um, but in this new building, um, we have a classroom, and this is why the city committed a million dollars to this space. There's a large classroom space that that we will be using for workforce development most of the time. But the next time there is another disaster, or even if you know FEMA comes to the area sometimes when you have um, hurricane victims that are evacuated here from other places, we'll be able to set up, we will flip that room to be a, a secondary emergency response center for the city of Richardson. And should anything happen to, the, they have a fairly new um, building that they built, but if that's ever level because of a disaster, we would be fully equipped in our building to flip that over and be able to accommodate what's ever needed there. The generator is full, or the, the building is fully backed up with generators and things so that we wouldn't skip a beat. So, and I think that that's a huge thing for the community in general, that we would have that going. Then community partners is a huge thing in this building too. So I'm really excited. Um, RISD is relocating their student services department there. They're leasing a portion of that space. Um, their newcomer center will be part of that. And their newcomer center is where they do registration for their pre-K for all, and they register their um, the families that are non-English speaking that are moving into the district, and then student services or counseling folks. Now, why that's important to be there is most of those people that are served by those departments are lower income. So again, that building trust, they're gonna come there to register, they're gonna meet network, they can access our food pantry, clothing closet, our programs, and then our plan is to follow up with them in their own communities, let them know when we're gonna be in their neighborhood, in their housing complex, in their, their daycare center, so that they can access our mobile pantry, they could get clothes to pick up, or whatever services we have. So I, I'm excited about that. It's just a way for us to partner together to reach more people. And then Methodist Richardson Hospital is um, planning to start a free and charitable health clinic on site there so that will be a great thing and they are also partnering with RISD to provide free health care for their employees on site so it's a, a revenue generator for the hospital will offset the cost of the, the free health clinic. St. Vincent de Paul also is partnering with us there for their free pharmacy they will have a, a, um, a, a station I don't know why I can't think of the name of it um, but they will you'll be able to get your free pharmacy things there in conjunction with hospital so it's a huge game changer for everything um, we do a lot of specialty programs for seniors and every Tuesday will be senior day where they're there all day um, doing their senior program how can you get involved because we're an exciting place to be um, you can volunteer volunteering is the the best way um, to be able to to really help us because like I said we're really lean on staff volunteering with different things, helping with clothes, but as I talked about coming to you in the neighborhoods, we need help with those mobile service deliveries and things like that. Our website, which is thenetwork.org, there's a link there for volunteerism and you can sign up right online to volunteer and, and whatever you would like to do. Um, we also need some different things. Um, if you need a rental space, we, you know, we're renting out. We have a community room with a commercial kitchen renting space for meetings, for events, people, birthday parties, anniversary parties. It's a good revenue generator for us. Um, but also, you know, partnering with us on career services. Do you have a special talent or, or professional skill that you'd like to share with people? We'd love to have you do a class there. Senior day, partnering with us on that. We're gonna have a meal for them, so sponsoring lunch, making lunch. We're hoping that churches come into the kitchen and everyone loves the church lady lunches, right? <laughs> um, being able to do that, arts and crafts, games, um, parties for the seniors. Of course, we always need financial and kind donations. Um, you know, having a, a food drive, clothing drive um, at your place of business, sponsoring event or training program. Now, fun things, our new building, um, it is opening in September. So fun thing that we're inviting the community, September 19th is our family fun day. It's just an open house for the community. All of our community partners will be there. Um, it is free, we'll have food trucks, food, games, whatever, but it's a chance for the, the just the community at large, clients, partners, to be able to see the day. And then my favorite thing, um, on September 25th, um, we are having our food pantry fork off. This will be the formal close 
to our capital campaign and our theme is stick a fork in it, we're done. <laughs> this is our celebration of the capital campaign being over COVID, I'm, we're pretending it's over, um, that we're done with the building and this is just a time to celebrate and move forward. So if you haven't been to our food pantry fork off, it's a cooking competition. You get to sample food from restaurants around our service area. It is the anti-fundraiser fundraiser. I have been in fundraising for a long time. I hate galas. I'd like, you know, you go to these things because you support the organization, but nobody wants to hear someone talk for 45 minutes and then ask you for money. We don't have a formal program. We do a wine toss and we're, <laughs> we're gonna throw like forks at balloons for chances to win gift cards and things. But it, it, it's not a sit down event. It really is just fun. You don't have to get dressed up. You just come out and have a good time, have some food and drinks. Um, with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes, sir. We have something locally called Feed Lake Highland. Mm -hmm. I think there's a diaper Lake Highland. I think yes. you coordinate with them. Or we not? have partnered with them on different things. So, you know, we do. We're aware of each other, and, and we partner on, on different things. So y'all have great service organizations in Lake Highlands. And um, my intention is never to push someone out. I want to partner, and how can we work together to enhance and be better? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, what's the source of your food for the food bank? North Texas Food Bank is our largest source. We get 60 to 70% of our food from North Texas Food Bank. The rest of our food is from food drives. Um, we do get a small grant from the federal government, um, for EFSP, which is the Emergency Food and Shelter Program grant. So we purchased some food, um, and those would be hard to get, hard to get items. Um, and we partner with some local grocery stores to purchase things at their cost um, for that kind of thing. But, but it's mostly the food bank, but drives are important because it gives us variety. When you get food from the food bank, you'll get a pallet of corn we can only eat so much corn, so, and, or they'll have pasta and they don't have sauce. So you have pallets of pasta, but nothing to put on the pasta. So, you know, we use drives to get us those extra things in. Yes. You talked about the poundage of food and the number of people served and how much that increased during COVID. Do you expect that to go back to pre-COVID? I hope so. I don't, I don't know that it will ever go back to pre-COVID. I hope it does. Um, more than half of our clients are new to us that worked here before COVID. I, I, and I think some of that is it was people laid off and in the need and they're gonna go back to work and we're gonna help people go back to work. But I think some of it is that, that people just got pushed to the point where they had to get help. Um, but the more people that have gotten help, the more people that know about network. So I, I think the, our, the larger our footprint is in the community, the, the more people know what we do. We'll probably keep getting newer people that just didn't go anywhere for help anymore. So I, I think it'll go back, but I don't think it'll ever go back that much. Yes. That kind of gets to a question that I had, which is how do you find clients and how do clients find you? Um, we really actively try to be in the community where they are. Like schools are big. So our relationship with the school district has been our, I think our primary way to recruit people and, and let them know. Um, classroom teachers, guidance counselors are a big thing because they they see the need. Um, several times a week we have a guidance counselor calling saying, hey, I have this family and this is what happened, how can you help them? And that's been big, that, that, we, that people who have the one-on-one -on -one relationships and have relationship with us feel that in. Um, so schools are big. The other thing is, is neighbor to neighbor. It is not uncommon to have um, people in apartment complexes or neighborhoods carpool together to come. You know, they help, they help me, you need help, we'll help you kind of thing. So word of mouth is a bigger thing. Social media has gotten to be big too, but really there is nothing like personal relationship with people in some way to connect and bring, bring people to us. And the vehicles are a good thing too because they see it on the side. We, um, we were at Adelia Creek um, for one of our very first um, food, mobile food pantries. And there were people that could see us from apartment complexes and then they came, hey, can we get home too? So it's, it's even looking at that. So, yes. So no one comes to your site to get food? No, they do. They, they, they come to, to our site to get food. So. How did you do that during COVID? Um, and, and we're actually still doing it this way because we physically can't fit people back inside the building. 
but we have volunteers that are shopping inside the building so they're they're gathering food and we the cars pull up around the back of the building and we take shopping carts out we ask cars as they come through do you have kids do you need diapers what size you know specialty needs like that and a lot of other organizations were giving out and they still are giving out emergency boxes of food we really didn't do that very much at all and it was just if like the lines got so big we didn't have another yeah, choice Sherry like did that and they gave out six million pounds and the line was typically three hours and, and i well i think that, that yeah that you have you have to because that's what, what you have to do and i think that that's good in the in the emergency but after this the three weeks to slow the spread turned into 18 months it was the same food that was in those boxes pretty much and i know i don't want the same food every week so we were really trying to get them variety and, and we always we still have those emergency boxes if we need it and we're doing some of that with the mobile pantry um but we really want to give people a more specialized order of groceries with things they need because when you do this, open well, we found when we do those boxes, people would bring a box back the next week. Hey, we don't, we have this, we don't need this. Where is your new sign? It is on the corner of Collins and International um, in Richardson. It is um, digital digital realty. If you know where that big service center is, it's well, like right next to it. So there's just a street in between us. Excellent. Any other questions? I do have annual reports. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cindy. It's, it's great to hear about, we know there's a great need out there, and when we have speakers like you come in and, and talk about it and you know, give us some, some greater perspective on it, it's always great to hear how those needs are being met. We thank you, and thank you uh, to Network of Community Ministries for doing that. Look forward to finding ways to partner with you all to help with that effort. Um, as a token of our gratitude for you being here, we have in this nice box that I'm going to open a little um, coffee mug with a little convertible piece thank for you. a cold beverage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you very thank much. You. All right. I am signing off. It has been a pleasure being a president of the Exchange Club of Lake Highlands. I will not be here next week. It will be the last last meeting of the, the term. Um, but really, it has been a pleasure. It's been an interesting year. It's been a challenging year. Um, I appreciate those of you who are here and those who have participated through the Zoom meetings and, oh, now we're going back in person, but we're going to socially distance and wear masks and just all the ups and downs, um, all the cancellations. I won't repeat the drinking game that we played at the officer induction ceremony a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, every time I had said cancel, you can use your imagination. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great honor. I appreciate y'all entrusting me with the position. Um, I really look forward to what Robert and his board have in store for us in the coming year. Um, the club is in great shape, uh, both from a financial standpoint, from a membership standpoint. Obviously, we could use some more folks here on Friday mornings. Uh, Y'all can help with that, uh, get the word out. I think, you know, kind of hearing people in the community talking about, I heard this great speaker at the Exchange Club on Friday morning. You know, the more people hear that, uh, the more we'll have folks show up. So um, with that, I conclude my term. Thank you all very much. Our next meeting is Friday, June 25th. Again, I won't be here. Robert Wong um, is, is taking the reins a week early, and we're going to have Brian Hawkins, Hawkins of Healing Hands Ministries, who you talked about, um, with us to talk about what they're doing. Um, we've been a longtime partner with Healing Hands Ministries as well, so you'll want to come and, and hear about what they have going on. All right. I was asked the last time I was up here why we don't sing anymore, so John. I am treated.